man, you're up next. All right. Well, I got another spooky story that doesn't have to do with horrors of nature. (laughs) This one is called Don't Talk About the Skinwalkers. Yeah, I bring the skinwalkers back. All right. He starts off like this. I have a story. It isn't mine, but it happened to my uncle. He used to tell this story a lot, and it's always scared the lights out of me. We live in Utah, and my uncle, Mark, went on a mission at 19 for the Church of Latter-day Saints. Uh, They sent him to an Indian reservation in Arizona. They paired him up with a companion named Carl. When they first got there, there was a huge rift with the locals on the reservation uh, with them being there. They didn't want my uncle and Carl staying on the reservation grounds. Eventually, they came to a compromise that they would stay on the outskirts in a trailer. The reservation wasn't very big. It was located next to a heavily wooded area. The first night, they were trying to sleep, when all of a sudden, their trailer started to shake violently back and forth. Startled and not sure what was happening, they climbed underneath their table for cover. Mark could distinctly hear someone pushing it from both sides of the trailer like a group of people. After about five minutes, it stopped. The next day, they made their rounds on the reservation and were talking to the locals. Carl made a comment to one of the families that their trailer was shaking that night before. The family got very quiet and then told them they had to leave. They thought it was strange but didn't think much of it. Next night, it happened again. They woke to the trailer shaking back and forth. Again, they climbed underneath the table until it stopped. This went on two more nights. Anytime they tried to talk to anyone about it, they got quiet and told them to leave. Mark started thinking that due to the tension of their arrival, the locals were doing this to scare them off the reservation. They didn't go into a convenience store and they were talking together about how frustrated they were with the situation. The clerk overheard and said, They can't talk about it. It's forbidden. Uh, Confused, they asked him, Can't talk about what? The guy continues to tell him about the skinwalkers. He says they're evil demons that were once Native American witches. They talk about it. The skinwalkers will come for their souls. They walked out of there baffled. They thought it was another scare tactic. So that night, when the shaking started again, My uncle decided to be brave and confront them. He went to the trailer door, flew it open, and yelled, Hey! When he did that, he saw three animals run off. Two were a wolf, one was a bear. But they looked strange. Some of their features were almost human-like. As he watched them run towards the trees, all three stood up on two legs and walked slowly towards the trees, making a human cackling laugh. Scared so bad, they called their mission president the next morning and asked to be moved. They relocated that day. For a year, nothing happened. One day, they announced that Carl was being relocated to another city, and Mark was getting a new companion. His name was Jimmy. They had to drive about an hour to pick Jimmy up from the airport. The road they traveled went through the boundaries of the reservation. They arrived about 8 p.m. and met Jimmy, and they had, then they went to leave. The mission president tells Jimmy, We are driving through a dangerous area at night, so we can't make any stops. If you need to use the restroom, you need to go now. Jimmy goes, I'm fine. The mission president gets serious enough to even freak out Mark. I'm not kidding. Go do your business. Jimmy was insistent that he was fine and needed his restroom. They hit the road. After about 30 minutes into the drive, Jimmy starts complaining and needs to pee. Mission president says, we can't stop here, you have to hold it. Jimmy says, they can't hold it. So the president stops the car and says, okay, but you will do your business next to the door, and if I say get in the car, you better get in the car fast. With a look of confusion, Jimmy says, all right, Open the door and starts to pee. About five seconds later, the mission president says nothing, grabs Jimmy, and yanks him into the car and floors it. Jimmy and my uncle start freaking out. 
What's going on? Mission President says nothing and just increases his speed. All of a sudden, my uncle sees something running next to the car to his right. A giant wolf-looking man was running on two feet next to the car. Mark looked at the speedometer, going over 60 miles an hour, and it's still increasing. The wolf creature kept right next to the car for 10 minutes until it finally took off into the trees. Shaking, Jimmy gets out of the car when they arrive. He didn't speak to the whole ordeal and says, What did I just see? The mission president says, Next time I tell you to take care of your business, you take care of your business. I think it's safe to say Jimmy didn't just pee when that happened, probably. Probably not. I will say that some people had commented on this. Uh, they said that they were also missionaries in that area. And they said it was, uh, the, the original person that posted this said that it was in the 80s when this happened. And they were a missionary later, this other person was. And they said they knew exactly the area they were talking about because of the the forest that they mentioned. And they said that they also saw things out there. They didn't encounter the skinwalkers, but they encountered other supernatural things. And so they they corroborated the whole thing, saying that there was definitely something that they encountered themselves. And I will also say another person commented and said they encountered something very similar, but in Iraq. They said that there was a wolf-like man on the edge of their camp one night when they were on duty, on duty he radioed it in and the people who radioed back said we know don't shoot it wolf bear man yeah told him not to shoot it why could make it, it worse is other thinking yeah, i think so and they said they eventually ran off into the night so going back to the beginning of the story when they're in this trailer and it feels like it's getting shook from both sides like uh i i can picture this like Although the trailer's just... not light, you could definitely feel multiple people on both sides pushing. Yeah. Uh, especially if it was like on blocks or not. Obviously, these aren't like well, uh, we're talking about tornadoes also in this episode. These things are anchored to the ground. Yeah, um, I'm thinking more like a camper trailer. Yeah, that's thing. what I'm thinking too when I heard that. So probably just maybe on wheels or just blocks when this yeah. at this point. But nevertheless, they open the door and they see... A wolf, a bear, and what was the other one? It was two wolves and a bear. Yeah, wolves and bears don't hang out. No, no, they don't. So the, first of all, that's ter- Okay, so if I opened my damn door and I saw it, forget my trailer getting pushed, if I opened my door and I saw a wolf and a bear, that'd be terrifying. If, if wolf I and see bears start hanging one of out, those, yeah, I think if I see one of those things by themselves, that'd yeah. be terrifying. Yeah, they don't just hang out. I wonder what yeah. kind of bear it was. Is Kodiak bear? I had to get Gene Moe involved. I don't believe it would be a Kodiak bear in that area, though. Uh, I could be wrong, but I don't think they're in that area. But I think they're just Alaska. <laughs> but yeah, still though, yeah, you may. I think I'd feel better if Gene Moe was involved, regardless. He, he would take care of them. He would take care of anything. But somebody's saying if someone says get in the car fast in that situation, <laughs> I wouldn't ask questions. Uh, they all said I'm going to go take care of my business. Yeah, I. He, that's a very underappreciated saying. Got to go take care of my business. Yeah. I actually thought that was actually um, one part of the story that I I, I feel like it adds, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Legitimacy. Yeah, legitimacy, because this is, you know, a, a Mormon I, missionary. Uh, they would say something like, take care of your business instead of, yeah. you know, take a leak or something like that, you know? You think they were smiling the whole time while this terrifying stuff was happening to you? Um, I, I, every single... Uh, missionary that I've met is consistently smiling the whole time, so probably. This would test them, though. The Mormon. Would. This would test a Mormon, right? It would test anybody, let alone a Mormon. Yeah. I think they probably were okay at first, but then towards the end of it, they probably definitely weren't. I tell you, if little Jimmy... How old was Jimmy? Didn't Jimmy seem like a little boy, the way they were making so, him sleep? the yeah. uncle, Mark, he was 19, and... I don't know the policy with the mission trips. You got to be an adult, I think, right? I guess it's like 18 or something like that. We're going to call him Little Jimmy, though, from the way he was acting. Yeah. little. I would have made Little Jimmy uh, use the bo- a bottle or something. Yeah, no kidding. I definitely would have. So, uh, Little Jimmy's taking care of his business, whizzing. Yeah. Whizzing out the door. So, he has the door open, and he's stepped out of the vehicle, and he's whizzing. 
I, I think yeah. is what happened. Yeah. And all of a sudden he's yanked back in and they take off down the road. And you said that as they were, and he was accelerating very fast. Yeah. He looked out to the side and they saw a, for like what appeared to be a man, like a, like a werewolf sort of thing running beside yeah. the vehicle. Yeah. With at 60 plus miles an hour. Jesus. That's fast. I don't, that's terrifying. I don't, well, this is where Utah, right? Uh, no, they were from Utah. They were in Arizona. I oh, no. They're from, oh, gotcha. I knew they were from Utah. Uh, yeah, Arizona, Indiana. Gotcha. Sure. So they're very, they're a rural area. Yeah. They weren't traveling down some road with hundreds, hundreds of cars on it. Yeah. And this was also in the 80s. So there was, you know, no, I would say no cell phones, nothing like that. You would have had to pay, uh, you would have had, yeah, you're right. It's just, what would you do? Maybe somebody uh, would find you later if that wolf man got a hold of you. Yeah. I will say, you know, my, that was a, a fun, scary story. Yeah. I am looking forward to hearing more of the tragic story that you have for us. And do you want to be a skinwalker if you ever, like, have, um, uh, re- what do they call it when you come back to life? Uh, reincarnation? Yes, reincarnation. Would you come back as a skinwalker? Or would you come back as Walker, Texas Ranger? Everybody wants to be Walker, Texas Ranger. And so nice I don't know if I want to come back as a skinwalker, but I would love, I not. I don't want to say it like that. If I had to pick the way I was to go out, it would be in a fight with a skinwalker. Not a tornado. Not a tornado. I would want almost anything that didn't have to deal with a tornado uh, the size of the one you've been talking about. There's one thing for sure, though. If you had experience like this with a person, like if you were around somebody that also had this happen, even if you didn't know it, you'd have something in common. You'd re- you'd relate to them. You-, you could feel like you related to them. Would you agree with that? Yeah. You saw the dog, didn't you? The black dog. I've heard truckers talk about it on the yard. They say it comes to take everything away from you. And it did. It almost it took did. everything away from little Jimmy. I, you know what? Yeah, it did. You know what I love about that clip? I think I mentioned it last time. Is I see something new every time. Yeah. That guy in the back's got like a deck of cards. What the hell is he doing? I, he's just I like don't... fanning it out like a casino fan <laughs> thing he's that back there. And, he, and he's so close. They're all so close to in this big semi. They are really close. He's like all up in their business the whole time. Where do you come up with this? Yeah. Shit. Yeah, he's such a such a mean. Those truckers on the yard are always talking. Yeah, it's true. I I love. I didn't realize that card though. I'll go back and watch that. Yeah, he's got cards in his hand. I always do. <laughs> Jeff Townsend Media. CG. Good night. And the question is, do I stay here? Will you be back? Are you gonna come back? Will you be back? Are you coming back?